You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of The Options Playbook. Well, I think it's worth noting the, the last couple of trades we should probably go back and review. And I mentioned that Roku a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I said that I, I just had this little alert within Ally Invest where you just get alerts every time the stock moves 5%. And because my phone wouldn't stop ringing because the stock kept going up 5%, down 5%, over 5%, sideways, left uh, just 5% was all the type of moves it could make, that we should do a long straddle in Roku and basically do a rinse and repeat of our strategy. So let's review that trade because last week we did say, well, I got it, the trade just isn't going with us. But we have a couple of days for our short option contracts, and those were the option contracts that were, December, that were expiring on December 13th, which was Friday of last week. And oh, by the way, I need to mention, we are taping Options Playbook Radio. It is Wednesday the 18th, and the markets are actually open at this point in time, but we're taping on Wednesday the 18th of December. So last week, I said, well, let's just wait a couple of days and at least let the short option contracts expire. We're down a little bit on the trade. But once again, there's not a ton of risk on a long straddle if you don't wait all the way to expiration. Obviously, you're paying up for it, and whatever you pay is the maximum that you could lose for the trade. But with that being said, the only way you really lose it is if the stock goes out right at your strike, right at the expiration date. And that's the only way you got to be a very unlucky person for that to happen and it stop right at that strike. But it does happen, so it's worth mentioning. So in this instance, we put the long straddle on. It was 1625. The expiration we were looking at was December 20th. We sold a short strangle against it. We sold the 130s, sold the one the 130 put, I should say. I should add that, that word to the end of that. We sold the 130 put, and then we sold the 170 call. So on the upside, we're hoping it either went up 20 bucks or it went down 20 bucks. And the main reason why we picked a 20-point wide spread is because we paid $16.25 for it. So we wanted to make sure that if it did actually reach one of the short strikes, that in that instance, we would actually be profitable. Now, when we did that, we brought in $2. The midpoint on the short strangle was $199. we are going to round that up to 2 so assuming we could get a midpoint fill. So our total risk for the trade was 14.25. Well, lo and behold, as soon as we uh, hung up the, the radio broadcast, or I should say shut off the radio broadcast, uh, Roku the very next day made two big down moves. And actually on the 13th, that Friday, it ended up on the close at 132.49. 
which is just kind of crazy that, that that actually happened. That was two points above our short strike. So, you know, good enough to, that we didn't have to get nervous that our short put was actually going to get in the money. And so at that point in time, you should have just closed it out. Uh, the long put of our long straddle with the December 20th expiration would have been trading north of $18. Uh, probably would have been trading closer to $20, $21 overall because it had some time premium in it and also a little bit of a bump in volatility probably. So that should have definitely been a winner. I didn't actually follow the trade all the way through and see where it was at, but you would have just closed it. And if you are still in it, well, get out. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, we're just looking at opportunity here on Options Playbook Radio. You know, it's not meant to be a recommendation, but if you're following this trade on paper, that's basically what you would look to do in, in this situation. The stock right now is currently trading at 136. I'm going to round up a little bit. It's a little less than 136 at this point in time. Um, so the trade would still be profitable, and so you'd be looking to just get out of that trade at, at, as of right now. Now, so last week we went back and we did a little festive event. We thought that we would come up with a Christmas tree butterfly. Literally was looking at doing a Christmas tree butterfly because it is the holiday season. We actually came up with a modified Christmas tree. It still was a ratio. And I think, honestly, I don't know where a Christmas tree butterfly came from. It's inside the options playbook as a Christmas tree butterfly. But it's really just a ratio butterfly spread. A normal butterfly would be a one by two by one. I would call that in quotation a normal butterfly. Um, a ratio is any combination, but the outside wings must add up to the option contracts that you're selling. So the buys add up to the sells. And in our instance, we did a one by four by three was our butterfly. And we did this because we were, you know, going into the holiday season, and, and I'm going to stick with this theme of, with our trade this week, but going into the holiday season and what happened last year, maybe we get a little bit of a downturn. We definitely are way above the 200-day moving average in the S&P 500 index, and a pullback going into the new year it wouldn't shock anybody, I don't think. So we did a trade where we did a butterfly, gave ourselves some upside potential, but we were able to get it done because we did a ratio, one by four by three, for a net credit of $1.05 to the account. Well, lo and behold, I went and got a little quote on, on that stock on December 13th uh, for the S&P 500 index. And that, that position closed, and I'm just going to round up a little bit here, at, one, at 3169. Our middle strike was 3170. So 3170. So it finished one dollar away from our short strike. So to say that that was a good trade. Now, if you just fell asleep and you woke up on the close of the market on the 13th, well, that was probably your best bet. But if you didn't, you should have got out of the trade a lot earlier. You shouldn't have rode that thing all the way to the to the close. I like to t say that in the uh, my favorite phrase when I'm talking about butterflies is that if you ever make a max gain on a butterfly, you do receive the stupid award for that because you just shouldn't be around that long. You should, anytime it's trading close to that level, you should just get out of that trade. So that was worth mentioning um, and, and just an interesting trade overall. So here's what our, our outlook was. The market, when we went in and did the, uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, which I'm just coining right now, when we did the one by four by three uh, Christmas tree, the market was quite a, quite a bit below uh, the long strike that we were buying. So we said, well, if the market goes down, we want to make a buck. If the market goes up, we want it to stop at 3170 or somewhere in between, and then we're going to close out that position and we're going to move on. But if it ever got to 3170, we just wanted to get out of the trade. We just didn't want the trade to be able to work against us. And so it just it traded very kindly for our position and ended up uh, to be a real strong position at the very end. They, actually, on that Friday, the market wasn't very volatile. The range of the market wasn't even that bad whatsoever. It was uh, the open was 3,000, or I'll just say it this way, 3,166. The low was 3,156, and the close was right. 
uh, almost like I, I don't think you could get a better situation because you wouldn't want it at 3170 because then you got to make a decision at that moment. Do I close it right now or not? But all right, so enough said on that. Two very interesting trades over the last two weeks in the Options Playbook Radio. So let's come up with another interesting one. All right, we have uh, – that was the first time we've talked about butterflies in a while, and definitely the straddles have been the themes for November and December. Uh, I'm going to look at a back spread this time. So I'm going to keep the concept that, well, maybe the market might go down going into the new year. I just basically flip a coin. I'm going to say that. Uh, anything we talk about on Options Playbook Radio, it's not meant to be a recommendation. It's just so that you can follow it and learn. But I like where the market is at right now. Volatility has came down a little bit. And on a back, we're going to look at a back spread. And on a back spread, I wouldn't mind if volatility went up because what we're going to be doing on a back spread is we're going to be selling one options, one option contract, and then buying two at the money option contracts. So in this instance, all that premium is on that at the money option. So if we get a little bit of a bump involved, that doesn't actually hurt our scenario. And I'm kind of surprised I see today that the VIX is trading right around the the, the 12 handle, and that's pretty much the lowest, especially in the last six months. But it's very fairly close to the lows for the year. And there's still a lot of potential news that's out there going into the new year. There's a lot of headlines that could happen. Uh, we do have a president that's, uh, that they're voting on impeachment on right now. So that adds a little bit, little bit of, of a twist into the whole scenario. And then we talk about trade. So why not? Let's go in and look at a back spread with puts. And we're going to use the uh, SPY option contracts to do this, just to make the trade fairly straightforward and fairly simple. So in this instance, when we do a back spread with puts, there's a couple of different names inside the options playbook. We call it, a.k.a. a ratio volatility spread, because we're going to be selling one option contract and buying two, so ratio volatility spread. But the name that I kind of like the best is actually a pay later put. Because in this instance, what we're doing is we are actually selling a short put spread or a bull put spread to try to pay for an extra put. And by doing that, we actually bring a net credit into the account by doing this trade overall. But if we are wrong, we're going to have to pay later because what's going to happen is we're going to lose on that short put spread that we use to pay for that extra put. So at the end of the trade, you figure out, well, okay, was I right? Was I wrong? And if I was wrong, I'm going to have to put, pony up additional capital. That would actually be part of my margin requirement uh, to get out of that trade. All right. So I'm going to mention again, we are taping Options Playbook Radio. It is December 18th. The time is 2.26 right now. We are looking at the S&P 500 index. We have a trading at 320.04, and it is up about 47 cents. We'll call it flat on the day, basically. And we're going to go out to the January 17th expiration. We're going to give us some time for this trade to run. And in back spreads, time decay is your enemy. If you are incorrect on your forecast, time decay is not your friend overall. If volatilities come down after you put on the trade, that is not your friend. Anything that erodes time and you are incorrect on your forecast is bad for a back spread. Okay, so we're at lows in volatility, and we're going to go out to January 17th. That's going to be our expiration date. So with that expiration, we have exactly 30 days remaining until that expiration. We are going to go in the money. Uh, the SPY is, as I mentioned, is trading at uh, 320.04. We're going to go in the money, and we're going to sell a 326 strike put, and that's going to bring in a good amount of premium. That's trading, uh, I'll call it on the bid at uh, 770. That's on the bid. And then we're going to use those proceeds to buy two at-the-money option contracts. We're actually going to buy the 1390, which is just a little bit out of the money, and that option contract is trading at the midpoint at $3.30. Now, one of the great things about the SPIs is that these markets are just so tight. You know, you're talking about a few cents between each of these option contracts, and that, that's a blessing in the options marketplace. So we can do this entire trade for a net credit of a dollar. 11 to the account. Now, that's assuming a midpoint fill, but the market's not that wide overall. It's 105 by one, uh, 113, 105 by 113. So if we, if we, we'll call a net credit of 110 just to make the math simple here, okay? So as I mentioned, if we do this, we're long one extra put 
to the downside, hence the name pay later put. We're long one extra put, and we are short a puts credit spread. So we want the market to go way down so that the extra put can help pay for the losses on the short credit spread. So we're looking for a good movement down to the downside. The ideal downside move would be at least the width of the spread. So 326 minus 319, we're talking about $7. So we're looking for a seven-point move in the downside on the SPY, and that's a fairly substantial move. We're looking at about a 2% down move in the market. That's very feasible to do, especially if we got some, some bad news that would come out. So it's a very plausible trade. Now, if it goes down 4%, this is, this is a, a, a big winner in, in this instance. Now, our biggest bet here is that the market's going to go somewhere. In other words, uh, we just don't want it to stay at 320. That's going to be our worst-case scenario. Actually, our, our strike is 319, and it's just the exact opposite of, like, the butterfly that we were just talking about, 319. And in order to lose your maximum on this trade, it's got to stop right at 319, right at the January 17th expiration. If it doesn't, you're going to be okay on the trade overall. But that's where our worst case scenario is. So we either, if we're going to do this trade, we're going to look for an increase in volatility. And I kind of feel fairly comfortable with that. I think vols are fairly low, down around the 12% level. And it's showing a little bit of complacency in the marketplace. If the market does start to go down, I kind of have a feeling that overall the, the down move could kind of feed on itself and it could push itself uh, you know, more than 2% to the downside. So if that's your view on this, and as always, this is just a paper trade. We're not meant to be a recommendation. I want you to follow it. I want you to see how the prices change. That would be a good thing overall. If the market does go down and it goes down below 13.19, as a matter of fact, let's add seven points to that. We really want to go down to at least 3.12, in this uh, SPY, S&P 500 index spider, if it goes down to that level, well, that, then we're in a good situation. Now, if it goes up seven points and it goes above our short strike that we sold to help pay for our long puts, 326, guess what? We're, we're okay. We did this for a net credit of $1.10 to the account, and if all the options expire worthless, that would be that scenario. We keep that $1.10. So we're doing a trade where we're just looking for volatility. We think the markets have been a little bit comp compliant recently. Maybe we're a little bit overbought. Uh, at least the 200-day uh, the moving average is kind of saying that we might be. And we're, we're thinking that we could. the path of least resistance is to the downside. But if it continues on up, oh, well, we'll do okay on this trade. So it takes a big move to get a big reward, but the risk is just that it stays right here and it does nothing. And uh, we're going all the way up to January 17th. We've got 30 days. That's a long, long time for the market to just do nothing on that trade. All right. So uh, lastly, let's just go through and let's just review it. And I'll uh, actually talk a little bit about the margin. So the trade is in the S&P 500 index, SPY, we have the market right now. I froze it. It is at 30, 320.04, up 47 cents on the day. We're looking to sell one January 17th, 2020 expiration, 326 put, using those proceeds to help pay for two January 17th, 2020, 319 put. We're trying to get this done at a midpoint. If we could fill it a midpoint of $1.10, don't forget to add in commissions on this. The margin would be that put spread, which is seven points wide from 326 to 319. So there is additional margin of $700 that would have to go into the account. But then again, you brought in a credit. So it, you can use that credit to help pay that margin. So you've got to come up with $590 for every one by two back spread that you put on or pay later put or volatility, uh, volatility spread, volatility ratio spread. That's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish into money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. 
Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.